okay welcome everyone to our session today so today we have koesha who is uh, in london right now so we can see the big ben right in her background so koesha welcome to our session today thank you vishal so uh, koesha could you tell us a bit about big ben uh, which is in your background sure hi everyone for those who are tuning in i'm currently in london united kingdom sat in one of the most iconic tourist locations here in london which is popularly known as the big ben but the other name for it which is less known of is that it is also called uh, the elizabeth tower uh, that is its original name actually that is how it was founded when it was founded uh, way back many hundreds of years back um and the building is just popularly nicknamed as the big ben that you can see in my backdrop it's basically a clock tower um and it's beautiful it's massive it stands out amongst all the kind of uh, buildings and architecture around the city um and you'll always see lots of tourists in this area as uh, that is also the area which is the parliament uh, so it's also the hub of uh, central government activity here in the uk so it's, it's the hub of uh, british leadership this is where everything started with uh, kind of the whole history of the british uh, ruling the whole world as well as currently still continuing to lead from this area as um the kind of leaders of the government where we have the prime minister's office the whole of the civil service um everything along this road so it's quite a busy area packed with tourists any time of the day and i think a great place to get inspired for your leadership skills and uh, come and learn and practice how history itself started here when it comes to talking about leadership skills Yeah, sure thank you very much so how do, how can people come here let's say if somebody is uh, coming from outside london to uh, let's say heathrow airport or uh, the central station of london what are the ways to reach this place so i think it's pretty easy and well connected if you are anywhere in central london uh, like i said because this is literally the heart of london it's quite well connected to any part of the city airport station or area where you're living in your hostel or hotel so uh, the nearest tube station is the westminster tube station as this is the westminster area like i said you have the westminster abbey the parliament whitehall so the nearest tube station is that there are also other bus routes which are easily available depending on where you are uh, there are also different tube lines in london so depending on where you are there can be either you have to take the grey line which is the jubilee line or central line which is the red line but everything is very kind of uh, well explained in the tube station there are tube maps that you can follow obviously google maps are the kind of easy uh, to go option if you are confused and trying to figure out locations and stuff um, but it's quite well connected overall so it's uh, never really any issue figuring out how to get to this place it's quite easy uh, what is a tube by the way So tubes in London are basically your metro service in India, which is which runs on the ground, and it's quite well connected with every part of the city outside of London, as well as uh, straight away connected to the centre of the city. So it's basically synonymous to the metro uh, underground railway, as they call it. Uh, but here it's known as tube. So there is only tube, tube everywhere, or is there anything like the tube goes above the ground also? There are quite a few different transport methods here. Uh, there is a separate overground railway as well, um, which is called just overground in a simple local language here. Uh, they again run separately and are again connected to any area outside of Zone One. Zone One is your Central London. So if you are to go to any other zone outside of Central London, that's where your overground trains were. Again, pretty well connected with. uh many other touristy places around london like shoreditch or white chapel which of course like good asian restaurants and stuff so for those areas uh, overground is what sure 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 and uh, does this clock uh, run uh, like a local time or is it like a symbolic time only yeah it does run local time actually and i think um at every day at 12 pm and 12 am or, or maybe more frequently in that or at dan dad it does also ring um, so there is a bell that goes ringing every time uh, the clock strikes a certain 
uh, time during the day, a uh, few times during the day, uh, but other times it's still showing the local time. Oh, it's actually gone off the bell right now, it is sleeping. Uh, so there you go. That's the uh, example what I was trying to explain. But there's also a big mass cathedral here. There's a church uh, it's called the Westminster Abbey right in front of Big Ben. Um, that's also a very historic uh, landmark where a lot of people come to um, see a lot of witness, a lot of history, and a lot of great stalwarts have been buried here from great authors like Shakespeare and some other poets have been buried in the graveyards behind the uh, churchyard. But uh, that's another great location where the uh, former king and queen of um, England were married. And then obviously a couple of years back when the queen expired, um, her coffin was kept here in the Abbey as well. So it's a very historically significant location where I am sat right now, rich in culture and history. So every day there is some or the other meeting happening in this parliament or it's more like a showpiece now? Well, the parliament is actually a working office for all UK ministers. Uh, so there are two houses here, House of Commons, House of Lords, um, which is very similar to the Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha in India. Um, and these are existing offices. That's where uh, every day, Monday to Friday, work is carried on by all officials who work in the parliament. Um, I've been to the parliament quite a few times as well for different meetings. Um, it's it's a really uh, great location to work from, obviously. It's literally at the bank of the River Thames, which is uh, the most popular and biggest river here in London. And you get uh, panoramic sights of the whole of London, from London Eye to Big Ben and um, every other location that you can think of. So it is a working and running office at the moment. And I think part of the parliament is also open to tourists, actually. It has a gift shop and stuff. So they kind of segregated the building in a way that it functions as an office as well as a tourist location. Sure, sure. But you mentioned you also went there for some meetings. Uh, could you tell a bit about that? Yeah, so this is just connected to my day job where I work for the UK government in the Department for Business and Trade here. So it's part of my job there. I've been to the parliament for a couple of times for work meetings with ministers and stuff. Uh, and I think for one occasion, I actually went there for a networking event as well, not connected with work, just outside there. So I've been lucky enough to be invited to the inside of parliament and get a tour of the building and kind of see uh, this marvelous architecture and the way things are organized and the way things run inside the building is grand and obviously needless to say there's high security and it's not uh, kind of easy to get in uh, other than if you are specially invited into the building but it was a wonderful experience just to be there. So when you were in the parliament uh, probably there would be some pictures uh, some kind of uh, energy contamination that is happening in you like did you feel a different level of energy like some kind of leadership energy in you when you entered the parliament and you saw that okay these are the places where a lot of leaders sit oh 100 percent. i think the corridors of the parliament they had that energy that just felt really powerful and majestic um and also walking there i felt really fortunate and grateful because um i think as a woman ethnic minority background here in the UK. It is not as frequently as you see women like me from women or anyone for that matter from another country getting that opportunity to enter the parliament and you know, have a functional meeting there. So I think it was a very grand moment for me. It was, uh, definitely taking away a lot of leadership skills because it just teaches you that to be able to be inside that building and to be able to think about all the history that has happened there in the last years, especially current ministers as well who work there, which is a powerhouse ministry. And that energy definitely rubs off in you when you're walking down that road. It, uh, it is teaching you, it is teaching you some insights and leadership as well because. Um, there is uh, resilience, there is confidence in the way you are just taking in all the grandiose of the building. You know, it could be nerve wracking, but uh, to be able to collect your thoughts, to be able to collect um, your kind of personality as you kind of approach your meetings and uh, approach the agenda for the day while you are there uh, definitely taught me so much and made me more confident as a person as well. Um, through that experience. So, definitely uh, recommend uh, coming here once if you can. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So I hope uh, our audience are a bit motivated to visit the Big Ben and uh, meet you and 
uh, exchange some leadership skills uh, and training from you. So we hope to see some of them with you in coming days. So take care for now. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye.